Greetings, this is Dr. Derek Ong with video number 9. Um, I'm going to be taking you through um, descriptive statistics and normality tests for quantitative variables. Now before we do the descriptive statistics and the normality tests, we need to understand a little bit about what do we do in descriptive stats. So in descriptive stats, there are several measures that we look in. One is, of course, the measure of central tendency. And uh, we will normally be calculating the arithmetic mean uh, when we do um, parametric tests. Uh, and uh, when we do non-parametric, we normally be calculating the median, which is the middle value. So the difference between arithmetic mean and the median is that the arithmetic mean considers the values of all, the summation of all the values um, divided over the number of um, uh, sample size, and that will give you the arithmetic mean, whereas the median will rank all the values and will pick the one that is right in the middle in an ordered array. And then mode, of course, is the most frequently observed value. And uh, geometric mean is something that we are not going to consider in this video. So mostly we're going to deal with the arithmetic mean. And then there is the measures of variation, which basically looks at how wide or how spread uh, your data set is in the sample. So starting off with first, of course, is the range, which we take the largest number minus the smallest number. So in this example, we have uh, 13 minus 1, so 12 is our range. Next, we look at interquartile range. Now, reason why we look at interquartile range, if you can imagine this as a distribution, you probably might have outliers somewhere in the lower side and somewhere in the higher side. So these outliers are going to affect the way we see the distribution. So what an interquartile range does is that it cuts off 25% on the right and cuts off 25% on the left to show us what is the middle 50% of the uh, data set range. So that will give us the interquartile range. Next, we look at variance, which is approximately the average of the squared deviations values from the uh, mean. So what this does is that it takes every single information minus the mean and square it. They sum all this and that's where you get the variance. Now the variance is closely related to the standard deviation whereby it is the most common measure of variation that people use. It basically shows how far every single um, data point is from the mean and it has the same units as the original data. So basically, you take the square root of your variance and that's where you get your standard deviation. The standard uh, range of all the data sets from the mean. If we look at how standard deviation is looked at, if you see we have a small standard deviation where a lot of the data set is really centered quite around the mean. And if it's a large standard deviation, then the f data are quite spread out, as you can see here. The other two that we're going to look at is, of course, the measures of shape, skewness, and kurtosis. We're going to look at skewness first. Usually, when we look at skewness, we always look at how uh, off-centered, if you may say, the uh, distribution is. So if you see a tail that follows to the left, that means more of the data set is centered around the right or the high-end side. So this is what we call the negatively skewed, or we call it skewed to the left. Now, if you forget where the tail is supposed to go, then or, or, or what this distribution is, just remember to follow the tail. So this is a left-tailed or left-skewed, uh, skewed to the left uh, distribution. If everything's normal, it will be symmetrical, which is not skewed. This is probably a normal distribution. And if it's positively skewed, then you have a lot more on the low end side, and this is a skew to the right. Follow the tail. Ketosis is probably the final um, data uh, distribution we're going to look at. 
So it talks about how peaked or how flat a distribution is. Leptocritic is high and thin. And mesocritic is probably normal and platycritic is probably flat and spread out. So now what I want to do is to show you a data set of a quantitative variable called marks and I'm going to show you how we're going to do um, one sample, uh, sorry, quite um, descriptive statistics on uh, this data set. So we go to analyze descriptive statistics, go to explore. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, these marks and we're going to do the um, normality test as well. So put the marks into dependent variable. You might want to do a histogram and a plot. But most importantly, look at normality plots with tests. That's going to give us the Komogorov spin-off test as well. So continue. No problem with statistics. Just press sorry go to options no no worries just press ok and here you can see the case processing summary or the results uh, the top results just basically say that there are 44 valid uh, data sets but what's more important or what we are more interested in is this particular um, table here so mean is given to us at 65.82, so that's the mean of the marks. And as I mentioned to you, you can take away the uh, lower bound and upper bound and 95% confidence of the mean, which means that um, we are 95% confident that uh, if we take 100 samples uh, from the same population, 95% of those sample means will be between these two uh, upper and lower bound. As you notice that our sample mean is in between the upper and lower bound. Um, and we take also a 5% trim mean. Now a 5% trim mean means that if you draw a distribution, it will take away 2.5% on the left hand side and 2.5% on the right hand side and it will give you the 5% trim mean. So if the mean and the trim mean is not very far off, then you will notice that the um, uh, distribution is not so uh, far from normality because then you know that the outliers are not going to have an effect right so but it's the mean that we want to report yeah this one here 65.82 um, they give you the median they give you the variance the standard deviation they also give you the minimum and the maximum values the range the interquartile range and interesting enough they give the skewness and ketosis um, finally, they of course give you the normality test. Of course, we use the Komogorov spin-off test. Um, there is a thing that which one do we use, Sephiro Wilk or Komogorov spin-off? Um, I would tend to use the Komogorov spin-off mostly. Um, as you can see, that the sig value here is 0 0.191. So if you remember from the hypothesis testing video, um, our Null hypothesis here is that the distribution is normal and we are not rejecting the uh, normality assumption so we can safely say that this data set of marks is normally distributed. Because if we go down here, we can see the distribution is fairly normal, the stem and leaf, and of course some plots. If the distribution runs very far off from normality. You will see all these dots going very far away from this line, but it looks as if they're really, really nicely distributed on the line. Um, as well as for this one as well, same thing, deviation from the normal. Um, it would look quite far off. And we have a box and plot, a box and whisker plot here, which shows the uh, minimum, the maximum, the median, and of course Q1 and Q3, which is the quartiles. So how do we report all this? Now we report this by looking into our results. So usually what we do is sometimes we don't have to report um, the mean 
right? If we need to report the mean, we report the mean, so we can have a uh, separate column here. But if we have um, qualitative uh, results, then we would want to report each and every one of the qualitative um, sample size and, of course, the percentage points or the percent. And, and if we report this, we must make sure that we have an actual percentage equals to 100. Yeah. So don't make sure that uh, we don't have enough sample size to make it 100. Okay. Now you'll be asking a question, uh, how can we report the mean separately for male and female? So if we go back to a different sample size, different sample here, let's say um, this uh, employee data set that we've used in the previous video, we would want to say that uh, let's use the current salary and see if there is a difference in the mean between the uh, male and female. So we can use back the same thing by going to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics and Explore. And we can even put this, oh, press Reset. Make sure you reset the settings. We can kind of have two different graphs to look at male and female. So. Let's put in current salary as our dependent list. And this factor is where we are going to split the data into two. So we're going to put the gender recorded here. Um, we might want to check normality plots with tests and histogram. And uh, let's press OK. So we wait for the output. If you notice that the output now, you get two sets, one descriptive for the female and one descriptive for the male. The same thing will come out. As you can see that the female's means are relatively lower, so significantly lower than the male's. And um, they will show you uh, two different uh, normality tests and both are not normal because uh, it looks as if uh, both female and male is not uh, normally distributed. The histograms, the uh, stem and leaf, and as you can see the deviation from the QQ plot, also from the, uh, the trended normal QQ plot. And of course, the side-by-side -side box plot, and you can see that the couple of outliers, which is represented by circles, and of course the star means that they are extreme values. So you can see that these two are definitely not normally distributed, but there's a much wider range of dispersion for the males as compared to the females. So that is how you report the difference. We can put a column here says um, the wages and then report the mean of the wage for male and female right and that is all for the descriptive statistics if you have any other questions on descriptive statistics please do email me thank you for watching